hey everybody welcome back to the channel it's another video and this time around we are going to be speaking books and i thought do a two-in-one because books are not the sole focus of my channel but every now and again you will see books pop up either in my vlogs or you will see a book video every month or two or you know just to inform you guys what i'm reading what i've collected uh what i've bought and that kind of thing so i kind of thought that i've gone through pretty much the last book the fifth book i'm like maybe 20 pages away from finishing and i feel like i want to talk about it because i'm not even sure if i'm going to finish those 20 pages but before i get into reviewing the other books that i've read and will suggest and all of that I thought let me do a popular tag on YouTube called the book tag and it is done by a lot of booktubers, book YouTubers, all of that but um, I thought that would be fun as a nice way to start before uh, getting into the book books. So I got the questions yesterday. Um, do you have a certain place at home for reading? For me, not really. I read where I am comfortable. So I read in my bed. I read in this little sunroom nook of the house where my books are. And um, there's a nice little couch that the sun is just hitting and it's so warm in here. And I read in here. Um, um, sometimes I read on the couch. There'll be TV playing in the back no no sound or anything but i'll read on the couch um you've seen that probably in my vlogs quite a bit bookmark or random piece of paper for me it's bookmarks i really really like bookmarks i don't have many so i pretty much use the same bookmark the same three bookmarks for all my <laughs> my uh reading the books that i'm reading um but even a piece of paper if i can't find my bookmarks i'll definitely use a piece of paper i'm okay with that too can you stop reading anytime you want or do you have to stop at a certain page chapter part yes for me it's very very hard for me to stop in the middle of a chapter it's so weird for me because then i don't then I have to remember the last thing that I read and all of that and I just feel like something is unfinished and for me I don't like feeling <laughs> like something is unfinished um do you eat or drink while reading i don't the only drink that i'll have is tea i'll drink something i'll drink tea or coffee i don't eat when i'm reading because one i don't like to stain my books with um grimy dirty hands and all of that so no i won't do that but two um i i just it's uncomfortable it's uncomfortable to try and eat something unless you're eating something really small like popcorn or whatever but still the grease from the popcorn will stain my books and i really don't like that so i typically just drink something and keep it moving can you read while listening to music or watching tv absolutely not i need complete silence um i can listen to meditation sounds like rain if it is raining then i can definitely read while it's raining that kind of thing but i i cannot watch tv or multitask while i'm reading i need to be completely in it i need to be in the zone one book at a time or several at once okay this depends if i am reading a thriller then i can read a anthology you know and have two at the same time uh if i'm reading a memoir like a small type of memoir small memoir with a a thriller or a fiction book or whatever that i can read two at the same time but i can't read two very heavy books at the same time there's always something that must be lighter than the other one that i can interchange between the two but a lot of the time i just prefer to read one book reading at home or everywhere i typically read at home um i carry a book with me if i'm really really into a book if i'm really into a book i'll carry the book with me um and if i have coffee somewhere well we don't do that now we can't really do that now but if i'm having coffee somewhere or all of that then i can definitely um read at a coffee shop or something like that but typically most of the time i read at home most of the time reading out loud or silently in your head reading silently in my head i find it weird maybe i'll read like the last line of a chapter like that i'm reading i'm I, i'm making coherent sense in my head but what'll come out is like mumbles it'll be like, 
that's 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 but that's like the last line or the last whatever i don't typically read out loud never no uh, do you read ahead or skip pages when i find myself getting bored with a certain chapter or what have you i'll really skim through which is what i did with this last book <laughs> i'll skim through because i just feel like okay you're lagging now like shock me somehow or you know do something that that'll get me back in there and i feel like the book is lagging then i'll i'll skip ahead sometimes sometimes not all the time breaking the spine or keeping it new this depends on the book um with really thick thick books it's very very difficult sometimes to just try and read without breaking the spine um some like there's a book here that i'm going to show you that i did have to break the spine uh but i try to read in such a way that i don't break the spine that's sun can you see that that's sun here yeah i try to read in such a way that doesn't break the spine um yeah some i do some i don't and i actually hate the look of a book with a broken spine i really don't like it and one of my favorite books that i'm going to be talking about has a broken spine do you write in books no I don't. It's a, well, it depends on what kind of book it is. If it's like a thriller or fiction or what have you, I can, I, I don't write in the book. But if it's a book like a memoir or a, I will annotate the book somehow. Or if it's a book with a really nice line, I'll flag it somehow. Or, yeah, but, but I don't typically just go, go, go ahead and write in books. It's, Nah, summer vibes, summer vibes, summer vibes. Okay, okay. so that was the book tag. Now we're going to get into the books that I've read. So in the beginning of June, around my birthday, not beginning of June, mid-June, I started reading, if I'm not mistaken. But if you've been watching my videos, you know exactly when I started reading. And I managed, we are now on the, what's the date? The 17th of July, and I've managed to get through five books. And basically in a month in a little over now it's probably over a month maybe a month two three weeks but i've managed to get through five books and i am so proud of myself as somebody who hasn't read in years and years and years i'm really damn proud of myself for getting through all those books so i'm going to be doing little mini book reviews of the books that i've read um and which ones i recommend and if i would give it a four out of five three out of five one out of five how i rate it and yeah let's get into it let's so the first book is this one this is the silent patient uh this is the first book that i started reading when my reading journey began a month and some ago and the silent patient my goodness my goodness i think i ranted and raved about it so much in my vlogs that i read this book in two sittings it's not two days like i started today and then i skipped the next day and i read the next day and i finished it and it was amazing it's a thriller that follows the life of an artist called by the name of alicia and alicia the book opens with alicia having shot her husband in the head five times after she shoots her husband in the head five times she then goes on this vow of silence and she does not speak at all she doesn't defend herself she doesn't tell us why nothing and um then what the book does is that it switches to she is then of course institutionalized and it switches to the book being narrated by the psychotherapist who was hired in the institution in which she works and who has this really intoxicatingly weird obsession with alicia and trying to help alicia and trying to have alicia speak again and you know he follows the life of alicia he does some digging he tries to speak to alicia in therapy sessions um and he he tries all he can in terms of you know finding out information from her family of why she would do this and all of that the twist at the end of this book i did not see coming if anybody saw the twist of this book coming if somebody read this i did not see it coming it was the nicest book to start my book reading journey off with and yeah i don't want to get too much into the plot or um 
put in any spoilers that's why i'm going to end it there but really really nice okay. and then the next book that i didn't quite like and i read after that was this one this is normal people by sally rooney um quick 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 review on this one i didn't like it i gave it a two out of five personally for me um i didn't like her writing style i felt this was a young adult romancy kind of novel um it follows the life of two youngsters well from from when they were in high school to you know it follows their lifespan over four years to when they're in college and all of that and uh marion and connell and I just didn't like the writing. She doesn't use speech marks. Um, there really isn't any... I didn't attach myself to any of the characters. She doesn't really get in too deep in how they're feeling about, you know, whether their disagreements, their fights, one minute they're on, one minute they're off. I feel like young adult readers definitely would enjoy this um, book. I didn't. I really, really didn't. She doesn't give nice descriptions of areas of places i really really didn't like it there's there's themes of 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 some sort of you know abuse in in the book but even with that it's not really tackled as well in detail i just didn't like this book and yeah very romancy i don't know Maybe. this is my dog vanessa by far my favorite favorite book should we put it here okay so i really really loved my dog vanessa my favorite book five out of five um dark uh suspenseful tackles themes of memory trauma um consent um, and yeah, it essentially follows the life of Vanessa. <laughs> I was always, what's her name again? Vanessa Y. And it, the, um, the book takes on, uh, two different, uh, time spans. It follows the life of Vanessa when she was 15 and it follows the life of Vanessa when she was 32, 33. And what it does is that it follows her relationship that she had with her teacher, um, we as a reader can already tell that it is not a relationship of like a real relationship of love, although to Vanessa at 15, it was, um, and then it switches back to when Vanessa is 33 and one, another student who went to Vanessa's school accuses the same teacher of, um, sexual misconduct against her and so this brings into question um vanessa starting to think about her history with this teacher jacob strain and whether it was actually was it love or was it actually abuse um very dark book very very difficult to read it is just one of those books where you feel like i i, I, I uh, sometimes you feel like vanessa wake up you know, it's like, you, it's, it's almost like you could shake her and be like, girl, um, I felt so attached to Vanessa. I hated Jacob Strain because he used a lot of manipulation on this woman for, from when she was 15 to when she was 33, because to, to, to in that whole time, they kept their relationship going on and off and she vanessa felt like jacob strain was the love of her life the eternal love of her life and i just one of the best books i've read really really great really really dark um explores things like sexual trauma consent um rape even pedophilia um yeah a really really beautiful book so well written my dark vanessa by kate elizabeth russell really 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 love and then my ultimate number one book in this series of books is this one now this book is one of my favorite books of all time definitely up there in the top 10 and um i feel like this is i i don't want to rate it if i could rate it i would rate it a five out of five i don't want to rate it because it is a non-fiction and it is a memoir about her body um this book is difficult to read it also tackles very hard subjects like rape and um 
body image and whew, yeah what 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 society thinks of body image so Roxane Gay takes us on a journey of her life and how food has played a very big role in her life and what has become of her and her body she talks about how family has um you know comments on how family has viewed her and viewed her body she talks about um society living in a world where fatness is not seen as attractive or desirable and how she would use food as a coping mechanism to keep people away from looking at her when in reality the first thing that people look at in a woman of a larger size when she walks into the room is her body it is so well written it is so powerful wow the it's almost like a series of essays because chapters are maybe like a page or two um long and it is incredible if you are somebody who ever at any point struggled with weight or body image or what society thinks of your body judging yourself constantly because of your body and all of that listen this book you must pick up and if you are somebody who has never had body image issues weight issues but you have family members who might be struggling with weight or friends or what have you and you don't necessarily know how to address that with them should you address it with them i highly recommend that you read this book because it talks about the things that people who struggle with weight don't like to discuss don't tell me about my body don't tell me about the fact that i am fat or i am big or what have you i know i am so yeah being somebody who struggled with my weight all my life even till now i feel like there's my fat days and then i feel like today i look great and what have you I, it's just been a lifelong struggle i got this i got this there were po parts of this book where it was just too hard to continue but i did it anyway and we love it roxanne gay did an absolutely amazing job with this one the last book which i am not quite sure i will continue to read i'm about 20 or 30 pages out this is home going by ya gyasi i'm gonna be hated for this because a lot of people when i put up snaps of myself reading this book a lot of people oops shall we so when i put up snaps of myself reading this book so many people were like you're gonna love it it's an amazing book it is insane it is da 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 it is da 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 and i was just like okay 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 even one of my good friends roxanne said you're gonna love that book it's a great book sure guys um it is very well written i gave it a three out of five it is very well written. It is a good book, but I feel like there are times in this book where it lagged and I was trying to find out. I wasn't trying to find out, you know, do people meet or what have you, blah, blah, but I was just trying to find out, okay, where are we going with this? It is a really great book that follows the life of two sisters, Effia and Essie, and one becomes the wife of a slave trader and the other becomes a slave and it follows their life like intergenerationally so it follows them to their children to their children's children and it's just and so on and so forth so there's one a lot of names the book is great because at the beginning of the book you have the family tree so you can go back to that but i didn't think of that until i was maybe over 100 pages in and i was just like yo Wait, so Essie is whose mom? And Effia is whose mom? Wait, what? Effia was married to who? So it follows all, all their lives, their children, their children's children, their husbands. It's a lot. It's a very, it's a good book in that it's well written. But for me, it wasn't, it really wasn't worth the hype. It really wasn't worth everybody ranting and raving and loving this book. For me, I gave it a three out of five um lots of characters there's a place where i felt the book really lagged um and yeah it was just really really hard for me to read so i hope that makes a little bit of sense 
and I apologize to those who really did love this book, but I gave it a real a realistic three out of five. If you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna go now. The sun is just really starting to annoy me at this point. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.